good afternoon dear students today i'll be going to discuss about fourth ventricle that is the cavity of rumbin cephalon of central nervous system so let us see the different structures of fourth ventricle in the viscera so in the viscera you can see that this one is a hemi section of cerebrum and you can see that this is cerebellum okay and this one is brain stem this is pons this is medulla and this is the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so this is the anterior aspect this is the frontal pole and this one is occipital pole so by seeing this we can say that this is the uh, left cerebral hemisphere okay so if you see minutely you can see that in between cerebellum and the brain stem that is pons and medulla there is one triangular cavity is there that is known as fourth ventricle so this is the position of fourth ventricle so this is one mid sagittal section of brain so we can see here the medial surface of the left cerebral hemisphere we can see the lateral ventricle here body of the lateral ventricle here we can see the thalamus of the left side here we can see the brain stem that is containing we can see pons we can see medulla and this is the cerebellum and in between cerebellum and brain stem we can see this triangular cavity it is appearing triangular in mid sagittal section so this cavity is known as fourth ventricle that is the cavity of the hind brain vesicle okay it, so it is present between cerebellum dorsally and the pons and the upper open part of the medulla of longata ventrally so you uh, know that medulla of longata has two part one is upper open part and this lower closed part so it intervenes between the cerebellum dorsally and the pons and upper open part of the medulla ventrally that is in the anterior aspect now if we see in coronal section so in this specimen we can see that we are see, we in this specimen we have just removed the cerebellum so let's see here also look at this specimen so just like this look at this specimen this is cerebellum just like i am seeing here this is cerebellum and this is cerebellum and the brain stem is attached just in the dorsal aspect of the cerebellum so fourth ventricle intervenes in between the cerebellum and the brain stem this is the position of fourth ventricle so if we remove the cerebellum from this specimen if we remove the cerebellum from this whole specimen so what we can see we can see this one okay just like this just like this if we remove the cerebellum from this aspect so we can see this side okay so this is the side of cerebellum where brain just like this cerebellum is present in the dorsal aspect of this brain stem so we can see one rhomboid shaped place or fossa here so this space is this is the floor of the fourth ventricle okay so it is one rhomboid shaped space in the dorsal aspect of the pons and upper open part of the medulla this is forming the floor of the fourth ventricle now you can see as it is rhomboid shaped as it is a uh, cavity so 
it contains one floor, one roof and there are lateral limits also. So we can see here only the floor that is the rhomboid shaped space that is known as rhomboid fossa. Now there, are, there is roof is there in this specimen you can see in this mid sagittal section we can see that this is the upper lamella of the roof and here is the lower lamella of the roof. Okay, this is the upper lamella of the roof and this is the lower lamella of the roof and this is the floor that is also known as rhomboid fossa and these are the lateral limits. This is upper lateral limits, this one and this is lower lateral limit. Okay. So this is the floor of the fourth ventricle. So as it is rhomboid shaped, it has four angles. So what are they? This one is rostral angle towards superior aspect. This one is caudal angle and there are two lateral angles. This one is one lateral angle, this one is another lateral angle. And as already I have said, there is one roof or dorsal wall. We can see in this uh, viscera, this one is roof. This is the upper sloping part of the roof. This is the lower sloping part of the roof. And roof is tent-like structure. It is a tent-like structure, okay? So you cannot see the roof here as cerebellum has been removed. So roof position of roof is just like this. It's tent-like, upper sloping surface, lower sloping surface. So this is roof and it is also known as dorsal wall as it is present in the posterior aspect. So roof is also known as dorsal wall and floor rhomboid fossa it is known as it is also known as ventral wall. So we can see that this rostral angle it is continuous with the aqueduct cerebral aqueduct of sylvius that is the uh, canal for midbrain and the caudal angle it is continuous with the central canal of the caudal closed part of the middle of longata okay so we can see that this floor of the fourth ventricle it is rhomboid shaped it has four angles one is rostral angle another is caudal angle and there is two lateral limits this one is upper lateral limit, this one is lower lateral limit, okay. And each lateral angle, that means this portion, projects outwards across the dorsal surface of the inferior cerebellar peduncle and appears on the ventral surface of the cerebellopontile angle between peduncular floculus and inferior cerebellar peduncle. So let us see, you can see that this is the lateral angles, lateral angles in the both sides, okay, this one is rostral angle, this one is caudal angle. So let us see in this specimen, so here is the position of lateral angle. So this lateral angle projects outwards across the dorsal surface of the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Inferior cerebellar peduncle that connects the medulla with the cerebellum okay so this lateral angle projects outwards across the dorsal surface of the inferior cerebellar peduncle this lateral angle projects outwards like this from here and appears on the ventral surface of the cerebellopontine angle okay so this one is cerebellum cerebellum is actually covering the whole part you can see from this specimen, okay. you can see from here, so this is brain stem, okay. this one is pons, this one is medulla and this is the midbrain. Okay. So cerebellar pontine angle means the angle between the pons and cerebellum. So here from here this lateral angle projects outwards and come in the ventral aspect of the cerebellopontine cerebellum angle 
between the peduncular flocculus and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Now at this side, so in this side, this lateral angle presents one aperture in the both side that is known as foramen of Lushka. Okay. So in this on this specimen, these are the lateral angle. So this lateral angle projects out towards towards the ventral side and in this position there are two foramens in the fourth ventricle those are known as foramen of Lishka okay from through which the CSF of the fourth ventricle discharge into the pontine cistern that is present in front of pons in the ventral aspect of the pons the CSF goes through this uh, apertures the both side and goes in the pontine cistern that is in the ventral aspect of the pons so through this lateral aperture the CSF uh, after coming from the third ventricle in the fourth ventricle then it goes in the anterior aspect or ventral aspect of the pons in the pontine cistern through this foramen of Krishka and through this uh, foramens the chordoid plexus of the fourth ventricle also peeps so you can see some fringes of the choroid plexus through this apertures in some specimens okay let us see you can see it here or not so this is the position of lateral angle or lat uh, sorry lateral aperture so through this area you can see part of the choroid plexus is peeping through this area okay. now the lateral limits let us see the lateral limits of the fourth ventricle so let us see the lower lateral limits lower lateral limits is formed by gracile tubercle this one and cuneate tubercle and also by inferior cerebellar peduncle so you can see two elevations here this is lower lateral limit so it is formed by gracile tubercle cuneate tubercle and also by inferior cerebellar peduncle in the upper part this is the upper lateral limit this is formed by superior cerebellar peduncle so we can see here that the upper lateral limit converts towards the rostral direction and lower lateral limit converts towards the caudal direction okay now let us discuss about the roof of the tent like roof of the fourth ventricle so dorsal wall or roof it presents three tent like dorsal projections to the cerebellar white coat okay tent like projection those are also known as recess so what are the three tent like dorsal projection they are one median recess and two dorsal lateral recess median dorsal recess it lies above the nodule of the vermis of the cerebellum so let us see in this picture so this one is this one is the vermis of the cerebellum so median dorsal recess that is lies above the vermis of the above the nodule of the above the nodule of the cerebellum and there are two lateral dorsal recess lies above the above each inferior medullary vellum so what is superior medullary vellum what is inferior medullary vellum so you can see from this picture that this is the upper sloping part of the roof of the fourth ventricle and this part is lower sloping part of the roof of the fourth ventricle so upper sloping part of the roof is known as superior medullary vellum lower 
sloping part is of, of the roof is for, uh, known as inferior medullary velum. So, the two lateral dorsal recess lies above each inferior medullary velum. Okay. So, one median dorsal recess that is present above the nodule of cerebellum and two lateral dorsal recess lies above each inferior medullary velum. Okay. The dorsal recess of the fourth ventricle divide the roof into an upper and lower sloping parts. So, for this dorsal recess present, the roof of the fourth ventricle is divided into upper sloping part and lower sloping part. So, this is median dorsal recess and lateral I cannot uh, appreciate here in the mid sagittal section those are present on the two sides of the media, medial dorsal median dorsal recess. Now, upper part of the roof is formed by two superior cerebellar pedunculators see in this specimen. So, upper part of the roof that means this area, this area is formed by two superior cerebellar peduncle, two superior cerebellar peduncle and the area between these two superior cerebellar peduncle is bridged by a uh, the interval, this triangular interval rather, it is bridged by the neural tissue that is known as superior medullary velum that means this part is breached by superior medullary velum. Okay. So, upper sloping part of the roof is formed by superior cerebellar peduncle and the gap triangular gap in between these two superior cerebellar peduncle is breached by the neural tissue that is known as superior medullary velum on which the lingula of the cerebellum rests. So, this is the area for superior medullary velum forming the upper sloping part of the roof. Okay. And this is the area for median dorsal recess. If we see from side, it's like this. If we see from side, let's see. This is superior medullary velum on which lingula of the cerebellum is resting. Okay. Now, this is the position for upper part of the roof. So this is lower part of the roof. lower part of the roof is non nervous that means it is it is devoid of any nervous tissue it is formed by the ependymal tissue and supplemented by the pile membrane derived from ventral lamina of the telacoroid of the fourth ventricle so this is upper lamina formed by nervous tissue lower lamina non nervous it is formed by the ependyma supplemented by the pile membrane derived from the ventral lamina of the telacoroid of the fourth ventricle Now, the conjoint pi ependymal membrane extends caudally from nodule and inferior medullary velum to a pair of raised ridge that is also known as tinea. So, let us see here this area the roof is formed by pi and ependymal tissue. So, this pi ependymal tissue uh, extends caudally caudally from nodule and inferior medullary velum to a pair of raised ridge here, pair of raised ridge that is known as tinea along the inferior medial border of the ventricular floor. So, this is the position of tinea. Okay. So, that is formed by the conjoint pia, pial ependymal membrane. Now, the lowest part of the roof is formed by a triangular process that is known as obex. Okay. So, we will see in the picture that I have drawn in the board, you cannot see in the floor. Okay. So, this there is a covering just like such some triangular covering here that is known as obex. That is the lower limit, lowest limit of the fourth ventricle. Now, below the nodule, lower part of the roof presents a median aperture. Okay. So, here is the 
inferior medullary velum on which the nodule of the cerebellum rest and below the nodule there is one aperture in the roof that is known as median aperture and also it is known as foramen of Magendi through which the CSF is collected in the cerebellum medullary system that means cerebellum medullary system. Through the foramen of Lushka the CSF is going goes bilaterally into the cerebellum pontine system to the foramen of Magendi in the roof CSF going to the cerebellum medullary system. So, between the inferior vermis of the cerebellum ok, inferior vermis of the cerebellum and the lower part of the roof here, there intervene is a bilaminar pile found the telacoroidia of fourth ventricle. So, from here there is a bilaminar pile fold is there that is known as telacoroidia of the fourth ventricle and the non nervous part of the roof of the ventricle presents some vascular fringes of choroid plexus that is arranged in the form of a T just like this. If we see in this specimen, so it is this is the non nervous part this lower sloping part of the roof. So, a vascular fringe is present just like this in uh, as the letter of T in th this is the horizontal limb and this is the uh, vertical limb just like this just like the letter of T. So, and sometimes the vertic vertical limbs of this vascular fringe can be found peeping from the cephalic uh, border of the foramen of Magendi. So, that is all about the roof of the fourth ventricle tent like roof. Now, let us discuss about the floor of the fourth ventricle. I have, I have already said it is known as rhomboid fossa due to its shape and it is formed by the dorsal surface of the pons and cephalic open part of the medulla and it is divided into two symmetrical halves by one median sulcus. Okay. So, you can see this midline sulcus, this is known as median sulcus which so this median sulcus which extends from rostral to caudal lamina. Again this rhomboid fossa by this median sulcus it is divided into two symmetrical equal parts ok. Again these symmetrical halves subdivided each half is further subdivided by sulcus limitans ok. So, you can see here this one this is sulcus limitans a faint sulcus this is sulcus limitans it is again subdivided by sulcus limitans into one medial eminence and lateral vestibular area. So, let us see clearly. So, this is median sulcus this faint circular area this is a sulcus limitans. So, it divides each half into one medial eminence this one in the medial aspect of the sulcus limitans is medial eminence and in lateral aspect is known as lateral vestibular area ok. Medial to sulcus limitans it is medial eminence and lateral to sulcus limitans is lateral vestibular area. Now, this is the widest intermediate part of the floor. So, you can see one depression here just like see this depression in the both side. So, it is known as superior fovea. Superior fovea is, is present in the intermediate widest area of the floor of the fourth ventricle. So, this depression known as superior fovea that is in the on the sulcus limitans ok. So, at the level of superior fovea medial eminence exhibits an elongated elevation. So, this is the level of superior fovea. So, this is medial eminence. So, this elongated elevation here this is known as facial colliculus ok this elongated eminence. 
this is at the level of superior fovea medial uh, in the both side of the median sulcus there is an elevation elongated elevation that is known as facial colliculus which is formed by the uh, beneath which lies the abducens nerve encircled by the fibers of the motor root of facial nerve okay so rostrally sulcus limit is flattened out to form a bluish gray area known as locus ceruleus so this is sulcus limitans rostral limits in towards the superior aspect it flattens and uh, it forms a bluish area that is known as locus ceruleus okay and the neurons here belongs to the neurons of reticular formation locus ceruleus uh belongs to reticular formation okay so if we trace the sulcus limitans caudally we'll see another depression that is known as inferior fovea okay bilaterally this is inferior fovea this is superior fovea and this is inferior fovea okay so median eminence opposite this inferior fovea forms on triangular elevation that is known as hypoglossal triangle so just at the side of the superior fovea there is facial colliculus and the median eminence just at the side of the inferior fovea will get one triangular uh, elevated area that is known as hypoglossal uh, triangle in this triangle we will get in the deeper aspect we will get hypoglossal nucleus medially and nucleus intercalatus laterally so this is the area for hypoglossal triangle okay this area for hypoglossal now rest of the floor that is in the lateral of the sulcus limitus elevated to form vestibular area so this is sulcus limitus this is the extent of the sulcus limitus lateral to the sulcus limitus this elevated area is known as vestibular area which overlies four groups of vestibular nuclei those are superior inferior medial and lateral so this is vestibular area this is hypoglossal area and here there is facial colliculi now vestibular area extends along the lateral recess of ventricle where dorsal cochlear nucleus projects as auditory tubercle so here is the position of auditory tubercle okay this is the position of auditory tubercle below the inferior fovea intervening between the hypoglossal triangle and the vestibular area so you can see this is the inferior fovea so below the fovea intervening between the hypoglossal triangle and vestibular triangle we will get this one is vagal triangle this part this part this part so this is hypoglossal triangle this is vestibular area so this is vagal triangle this one minute this is hypoglossal area and this one is vestibular so this is this part vagal area okay okay now in the uh, deeper aspect of the vagal area there lies the dorsal nucleus of the vagus nerve here this is the vagal area okay so so there is another oblique ependymal thickening is there in the lower aspect you can see here that is known as funicular separance and it separates the vagal trigon from a tongue shaped inferolateral area known as area postrema so this one is area postrema okay let's see this is area postrema here is the position of funicular separance so funicular separance separate vagal area from this area postrema and this area is composed of highly vascular uh, neuroglial and neuronal tissue and this area area postrema is devoid of blood brain barrier 
Now beneath ependymal floor, a few strands of nerve fiber known as stria medullaris. Okay, so this area, stria medullaris, wind round the inferior cerebellar peduncle and extends horizontally up to the medial sulcus, goes deep to the substance of the brain stem. Here, this is the position of stria medullaris. It goes wind round the inferior cerebellar pedagogy go, goes within the deeper aspect of the uh, uh, deeper aspect in the substance of the brain stem and the fibers of this stria medullaris are derived from the arcuate nucleus. Now the lowest part of the floor you can see it resembles unlike the pointed nib of a writing pen. So, this area is also known as calamus scriptorius, okay, respiratory center uh, and different vital centers are present here. Now, what are the recess of the fourth ventricle? There are six in number altogether, three in dorsal wall, that is one median dorsal recess, above cerebellar nodule and two lateral dorsal recess above inferior medullary velum. One medial dorsal recess and two lateral dorsal recess and again two lateral recess between the inferior cerebellar peduncle and peduncle of flaculus. And in some books uh, there is uh, written like there is another recess is there that is behind obex this part. So in the floor we will get one median dorsal recess, two lateral dorsal recess and two lateral recess also and maybe there is a recess behind obex ok. So that is all see in the see some pictures in the blackboard for better understanding. So let us see this picture. So we can see this is the rhomboid fossa, this is the median sulcus, this is the sulcus limitans, okay. These are the lateral limits of the rhomboid fossa I have said already. This is cerebral aqueduct and this is continuous with the central canal of the close part of the medulla and this is special colliculus at the level of superior fovea, this is locus ceruleus, this one is locus ceruleus, this is superior fovea, this is special colliculus and this is inferior fovea. So we will get uh, this one is hypoglossal triangle at the level of inferior fovea and this is vagal triangle here, this is area prostrima and this is obex, this hole is calamus scriptorius, okay. This is basal tubercle, cuneate tubercle and you can see here this is the vestibular area on the both sides, okay. So this part is very much important you have to remember all the uh, things here. This is superior cerebellar peduncle, this is inferior cerebellar peduncle and this is middle cerebellar peduncle and this is triamedullaris the fibers of which are coming from the arcuate nucleus, okay, so going deep into the brain stem. Now in the mid sagittal section, you can see it is, uh, this is the ten triangular space, this is the roof, this is the floor, this is the upper sloping part of the roof going, uh, this is the median dorsal recess, lower sloping part of the roof, this one is median aperture or foramen of magendi. Here you cannot see in the lateral aspect, there is lateral aperture that is foramen aglushka. So, we will get median dorsal recess here, and there are two lateral dorsal recess in the this side, and here is lateral recess in lateral aspect, and there is another recess at the level of obex. Okay. So, we can see here the CSF pathway, so it is coming from the third ventricle and then fourth ventricle. In the median aperture that is for a of magenta, it goes into the cerebellar medullary system. system. This is the cerebellar medullary system and it also 
goes in front into the cerebellar pontine cistern okay, through the lateral aperture or foramen of Lishka. So, that is all for fourth ventricle. Thank you.